In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use fragments using Jetpack Compose. And the feature that I'm gonna be kind of highlighting in this video is interoperability. So what does interoperability mean? Well, it essentially means how uh, easy is it for like, generally speaking anyway, how easy it for is it for like new technologies to integrate with old technologies or for new APIs to integrate with old APIs. So you can imagine probably already what I'm gonna be talking about is how Jetpack Compose can integrate into you know, old projects or not even necessarily old projects, just pre-existing projects. So how easily can you like slowly integrate Jetpack Compose into an existing code base? So as you can already probably imagine, interoperability is very, very important because if you just think about the logistics of adopting a new technology into an existing code base, if it's not easy to do, no one's going to do it. No one's going to decide to you know swap out an entire code base if that's what it takes to use a new technology. The way to do it is sort of piece by piece. If you can slowly like iteratively integrate a new technology over time into an existing code base, that is typically you know the more realistic approach. Piece by piece uh, in, in the context of Android development, you know fragment by fragment, view by view, if you can do it that way, it's much more realistic that people are going to adopt that new technology. So I think Jetpack Compose has done a wonderful job at producing good interoperability and we're we're going to be going through some examples in this video. So let's get started. So we're going to be continuing from the previous video when we looked at kind of rows and columns. I'm going to put a link up in the top here to go watch that video if you haven't watched that. But I'm going to show you everything you need to in this video anyway. So let's start with a simple example. So, so far we've, we've had this kind of set content example where we can put, you know, composables inside of here and then we can inflate those composables. But now how do we use fragments? Because, you know, uh, probably a a lot of you like the single activity architecture, which is what I like to use. So use lots of fragments. So how do, how do we use fragments? Well, let's create a new fragment. So let's go over to the main package directory, go to new, new Kotlin file, and let's call this uh, recipe list fragment, since this is going to be a recipe application eventually when we get to actually building that functionality out. So make sure you get the Android X fragment import, and there's our new fragment, our new recipe list fragment. So now let's create a layout for this. And if you have some experience with Compose, you know that you don't really need a layout, but I just want to show you a bunch of different examples. So don't get ahead of yourself. Just take it piece by piece as I kind of teach this to you. So go into layout, go into new layout file, create a new layout file named fragment underscore recipe underscore list. And inside of here, let's go to the code tab and we're going to add something inside of our constraint layout. Let's just add, you know, a text view. Let's say, uh, you know, text view and do wrap content, wrap content give some spacing here, add some constraints. Let's constrain it to the top of the parent. We'll constrain it to the start of the parent. So parent, and let's constrain it to the end of the parent. And then let's add some text to this. So I'll just say text and say, hey, this is some text. Or we can just do the title of the fragment, actually. That's probably a better idea. So I'll just say recipe list. That way we know this is that recipe list fragment. Give it some text size of, you know, 21 SP. So it looks quite large. So now let's go into our fragment, go into recipe list fragment. And again, if you have some experience with Compose, I know this isn't like the optimal way to do things. So just settle down. If you're getting excited, I'm going to be going through some examples. I am going to get to the optimal way so don't worry now press Control o and get to on create view and get the on create view function uh, now we want to you can actually i'll give you some space here so you can see a little better delete this return and the super and create a new view so do view equals uh, inflator dot inflate Res, uh, specify the resource or r.layout.fragment r recipe list, then do comma, container, and false, and then just return that view. So this is the classic way to inflate a fragment. You know, obviously I could have condensed this into one line, or if you are familiar with kind of the newest kind of stuff with fragments these days, technically you don't even need the on create view function. So I could comment that out and I could just pass the layout as a constructor argument to the fragment up here. And that would also work. But for the sake of of the examples that I'm going to show you in this video, just humor me and let's add the on create view function. And I promise you, you're, you're going to see why in a few minutes here. So there's our first kind of fragment. Now let's go into activity main and let's add a container for this fragment. So we're going to use the fragment container view class, which is the new kind of, uh, I guess, fragment or new kind of frame layout, I guess is a better way to put it. Give it an ID of main container. So main underscore container. And there's our fragment container view. Now we need to go into act 
into main activity and let's actually bring this fragment into view. So just do get support fragment manager, begin transaction, replace main container, then just instantiate the fragment that we want to bring into view. So that's gonna be recipe list fragment and then do dot commit. Oh, I did actually forget one thing. We do need to call set content view in the activity. So set content view and then r.layout layout.activity main. All right, now let's rerun that and see if we get our fragment coming into view. Boom, there we go. There's our recipe list fragment coming into view. Okay, so now how can we use Jetpack Compose with our fragment? Well, the first way, which is the easiest way, which is the way I'm gonna be doing it throughout the course, is we don't even need to use a layout. We do not need to reference any sort of a layout file for this fragment. We can simply you know, go view, and I'm gonna write this out the long way first, and then I'm gonna condense it down. I can say compose view, which is a special kind of compose class. I can say require context, which is one way to get the context inside of a fragment. And then I can just do uh, you know, view.apply and set some kind of uh, some, some composable. So I can do set content, set content just like we did in the activity and say, you know, here's some text. Uh, I will get the compose import for the text and I'll say, hey, look, a composable. And then I just want to return that view. So again, I, I wrote this out sort of the long way and I'm gonna condense this down after we run it. So let's just run this and make sure that we do get a composable coming into view in our fragment. So there's the app running. And there is our composable saying, hey, look, a composable. So this is the simplest, simplest possible implementation of how to use compose inside of a fragment. And like I said, I'm gonna kind of condense this down. So really all you need to do is do return compose view, uh, require context, and then do dot apply. And then we can do set content, set content and say, you know, hey, here's our composable or whatever. In this case, I'll say, you know, recipe list fragment. And that is kind of the shortest way possible to write this. And this is not nullable. I can actually delete that question mark. So this is awesome. This is super simple. Basically, this just showcases, you know, how great the interoperability of, or one of the reasons why the interoperability is so great with Jetpack Compose. So that's all great, but what if you have some kind of like a custom view that isn't supported by Compose yet? Like say you built some, you know, special view that extends image view or extends text view or whatever, or even uh, if you take a look at the Android documentations in the Jetpack Compose section, the example that they give is a map view. So if you're using like the Google Maps SDK, what if you want to show a map view in a, in a composable. Now, the, those particular kind of custom views aren't currently supported by Compose. So in that case, what do you do? Are you stuck? Like, what can you do? Turns out there is something you can do. And again, this kind of showcases the, the great job they did with the interoperability of Jetpack Compose. So let's look at an example of how you would integrate kind of a custom view, map view, whatever into a composable. So if you know me, you know that I like to use realistic examples whenever possible. So I'm gonna uh, put a link down below to this repository. Uh, my, this is actually my old local database caching with a REST API course. Uh, in this course, I built this, this horizontal dotted progress bar kind of custom view. So find this, I'm gonna put a link down below again and copy all of this. So copy the entire Java class. Yes, it's that old. It was actually built with Java, not even Kotlin. Copy the entire thing, go into MVVM recipe app. And let's create a new Java class called horizontal uh, progress bar. You could create a Kotlin file. Android Studio would just convert it anyway. Uh, ooh, what is all this? It's been so, I'm just gonna create a Kotlin file. Forget Java, let's go new Kotlin class, do horizontal, horizontal uh, progress bar and just paste in the code and Android Studio should convert all of that dirty old Java into Kotlin. And I'm not getting any warnings and no errors, so it looks pretty good. So I'll close this, uh, well, I'll leave it open, I guess, sure. So now what, what do we wanna do? What could we do if we wanted to use this horizontal progress bar into our recipe list fragment, but we don't we don't have a layout. So how do I how do I bring this into our composable? And you know this is a you could imagine too that this is like a map view. If this was a map view, you'd be doing exactly the same kind of process. So let's go into a fragment recipe list, and I'm going to give myself some more room here to give you guys a better view. And let's create a new kind of or add a new sort of widget into this XML. This is going to be a compose view. So compose UI platform compose view. Uh, width will be, let's do wrap content, wrap content, close this off. Let's add some constraints to this. So add constraint top to the parents. We'll do constraint end to the parent. 
uh, constraint uh, start to the parent. And then uh, do I need a constraint bottom? Yeah, let's add a constraint bottom. Constraint, constraint bottom also to that parent. And we do need to give this an ID since we're gonna be referencing it inside of our fragment. So I'll just call this compose underscore view. Now let's go back to recipe list fragment. First, I'm gonna minimize this and we're gonna need to change this back to that kind of old and dirty way because we do need to make use of the XML layout, but we've kind of inserted a composable into it or inserted composable capability inside of the layout. So inflate r.layout.fragment recipe list container and false, and then we want to return the view. But now we want to add a composable to this view. So we wanna do view, find view by ID. This will be that compose view widget that we just added or that compose view XML thing that we added to our layout. r.id.compose view, do set content. And now boom, we have the ability to add a composable inside of our XML layout. So we expect to see kind of the, whoops, I went to the wrong file. We expect to see this kind of recipe list title that was still there. And then down below it, we're gonna have a, a composable. So now what do we wanna put inside of this composable? Well, let's add a column, first of all, just to make it you know organized and make it into something more realistic. You're always gonna have a column or a row. Do modifier equals modifier dots. I'm gonna add a border so it makes it really clear kind of where the composable starts and where the composable ends. So you can very clearly kind of see. Do color dot black. So there we have our border. And let's also add, I'll also add some padding. So go to the next line, do padding, 16 DP. Again, just so you can really clearly see kind of where the composable starts and where it ends. So now let's add some other kind of random stuff in here. Let's add some text saying this is a composable, all capitals, uh, inside the fragment, inside the fragment. And then I'll do a spacer, spacer, and get that import, do modifier equals modifier, whoops, modifier dot padding, just do 10 DP of padding. And then next, maybe do, let's do a circular progress indicator just for fun, just to see what that looks like. So this will be like a circular spinning progress bar, just like kind of the standard Android progress bar typically looks. Let's add another spacer. I'll add some more text just for fun that says, you know, neat. And then, you know, one more spacer. And then now let's add that, that custom horizontal progress bar that we were trying to add. So again, if you had a map view, if you were using like the Google Maps SDK, if you were using anything that Compose did not support, you could just do this. So value, I can do like custom view, set it equal to the horizontal dotted progress bar. The only argument that it requires is the context. I can get the context by going context ambient dot current. So there's our horizontal dotted progress bar. And now to add this to our, our compose view, I need to call Android view, which takes a single required argument. It takes a couple arguments, but only one that's actually required. And this is the view that, uh, that it's going to inflate. So it takes a function. So I'm just instantiating a new function here and then saying custom view. So now our horizontal progress bar will be added along with all these kind of other composables inside of our compose view. All right, so let's run it and take a look and see if it's working. So there we go. We have our recipe list text up at the top. We have this is a composable inside of a fragment in all capitals. We have that circular indeterminate progress bar, that neat text, and then down below that custom view that's actually just a Kotlin file um, and it's being inflated as a composable. So again, I just wanna reiterate that you could do this with any custom view. Again, the interoperability is so good. Any old custom view that was built, you can very easily integrate it using this compose view sort of mechanism. You just add the compose view into the XML, uh, inflate it like I showed you, and then boom, you can leverage any sort of old views that you've built. If this is the first video that you're watching of mine with Jetpack Compose, this video is actually part of a, a whole course. I'm making an entire free course on YouTube where I'm gonna show you how to build a recipe application using Jetpack Compose. So you're going to be able to search recipes from a real API that I built, again, free. I put it online on the internet and uh, learn how to build an app with Jetpack Compose. So make sure to subscribe down below. Leave a like if you didn't leave a like already and leave me some kind of engagement. Go down into the comments and say, hey, Mitch, here's your engagement. Hey, Mitch, here's your Compose engagement. Thanks for the Compose 
compose videos, whatever. Say something, say hi, say you enjoy the videos. Doesn't matter, just say something. And if you like the videos, again, make sure to leave a like down below. If you wanna be notified when new videos come out about Jetpack Compose or any of my other courses, go to my website, codingwithmitch.com, register an account, and you will get emails when I update uh, the course with lectures. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.